Hello there guys, my name is Coaster Child Dogs to Born Book Build for Theme Parks and welcome to a Coaster Child Fact File. This is a very interesting one. Now this video was a suggested video from Coaster Key. You can also follow him on YouTube with Coaster Key or Instagram, Coaster Key Official. Uh, go and check him out on Instagram and YouTube. And he suggested this fact file looking at the scrapped plans for a Schwarzkopf roller coaster at Alton Towers back in the 90s. And I... I didn't know what he meant at first, and then I sort of looked into it with the research and thought, yeah, this is going to be good. So it's a bit like a closed but not forgotten, but it's more of a fact file, I guess. I, I, I guess. I kind of think so, I guess. Uh, but it's not really a closed but not forgotten, because it never happened. Um, but uh, we're going to be looking at this fact file, look into it, look at the whole story behind it, and share my thoughts on this, what, what could have been. A coaster for Alton Towers. Now, before we get started, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell so you never miss another YouTube video. Make sure you go and check the description down below for Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, and Discord links, and also the uh, video suggestions link, the Google Forms link, where you can put in your content ideas if you want your video ideas like this one to be a thing on the channel. And for now, guys, let's have a look at all the facts around this mystery sports scarf that could have come to Alton Towers. For the 1991 season, Alton Towers were looking for a big new attraction. Their latest major roller coaster had been the corkscrew, but this was going to blow that one out of the water, as Gru from Despicable Me would say in a very bad accent. Um, but this one was on another scale. This one, to quote Michael Pantenberg, to be one of the biggest, let's say probably the biggest steel roller coaster ever built that time. The roller coaster, designed personally by Anton Schwarzkopf, was planned for the Abbey Wood area near what is now known as Dark Forest, though little is known about the exact site of the ride. The ride was to be a sequel to the Leesburg Banan, but bigger. And I mean bigger. When I say bigger, I mean bigger. Um, Leesburg Banan, for a few people who need to know some stats on that ride, has a height of 147.7 feet, a length of 4,397 feet, and a top speed of 49.7 miles per hour, and open back at Leesburg in Gothenburg, Sweden, on the 18th of April, 1987. The coaster would feature an absurd three, that's right, not one, not two, but three lift hills with two running parallel, much like the SW7 designs. The Secret Weapon 7 designs, of course, became the Smiler. Echoing Leesburg Banan, the ride was to use the terrain to its advantage, forming graceful arcing circles, helixes sending the train spiraling through the trees. Unlike the eventually built Secret Weapon 3, aka Nemesis, the ride would clearly have a family thrill coaster. It would have been a family thrill coaster. Dispatching was to be synchronized, so trains climbed the double lift together. If built, the ride could have possibly have been Anton Schwarzkopf's magnum opus and the conclusion of his constant ambition to build bigger and more complicated, elaborate thrilling machines. He retired back in 1995 and sadly passed away on, in 2001 at the age of 77. Even by 21st century standards, his coaster would have been nothing short of epic. Unfortunately, this is around the time Schwarzkopf went into liquidation. Alton Towers had just been bought by Two Swords and their coaster guru John Wardley decided to cancel the plans. Wardley said the 1991 project, the idea was flawed because it assumed that you could dispatch trains without any delays. However, this is not always the case, and that it would have been an operational disaster. Still eager for a major new coaster at the park, he turned to Arrow for their pipeline designs which formed the base of Secret Weapons 1 and 2, which we'll probably save for another fact file. Dis dissatisfied with Arrow's awkward and clumsy design, he turned to the bright new upstarts Bulger and Mabillard, and after years of turmoil and the quest for a new park icon, a B&M inverted coaster finally opened in 1994 in Forbidden Valley. And that's how history was written, boys and girls. So this is definitely an interesting story of what could have been if Schwarzkopf hadn't gone into liquidation and what could have been an epic coaster. But the doubts of operational and reliability, 100% mechanicalisms, definitely was a factor in the fact that this Schwarzkopf coaster, bigger than Leesburg Banan, never happened at the Magical Towers. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, Thrill Seeks of All Ages. That is your fact file on this Fort Scoff that never happened at Alton Towers in the Abbey Wood area. The two parallel lift hills, three lift hills in total. A bigger version of Leesburg Banan. That's a dream coaster, by the way, at least, but that's always been a dream coaster of mine. So if I ride that, I could have 
felt what I would feel if I had a road what could have been built at Alton Towers back in the 1990s. And, you know, this is, you know, when I did the research on this, this is a very interesting story. It's a very weird story as well, because the reason why I say it's weird is because it's very, it's very weird and unique to hear about things that could have been. You sort of feel like, God, I really want that to be the case now. I want to see what, what, what would have happened if Alton Towers built this ride or someone came in and helped Schwarzkopf financially or helped them finish build the project if Schwarzkopf well, fell into liquidation. So... You know, could this have been the project that uh, could have saved Schwarzkopf? Could this have been the design that saved the company? We'll never know. We'll never, never know. Anton Schwarzkopf, who unfortunately passed away back in 2001, it's coming up to 20 years nearly since he died. And, you know, Anton Schwarzkopf will always remain a theme park legend. Always, always, always a theme park legend. And it would have been interesting to see if that creation for Alton Towers would have come true or not, and it would have saved Schwarzkopf from liquidation. And, you know, it'd be really, it would be really, really interesting. It would, it definitely would. So, comment down below, what would, what would you think if this actually happened? Do you think it would have been gone by now? Do you think it would stay? Do you think it would be uh, one of the signature rides in the park still? Or something on, li on the lines of Corkscrew, where it started off signature, and then over time it became more rough and less rideable, should we say, compared to other rides. Um, comment down below, what do you think? But... Massive shout out to Coaster Key for giving me this video idea because I had a lot of fun researching this. But yeah, this has been brilliant. This has been a really good video to do. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, guys, my name is Coaster Child. Keep living the coast life. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a sports golf day.